Well, it's cords and coffee. Boom. Got David Dove here. Cheers. Take you a quick drink. And I mean take you a quick one because we're about to launch into this. Let's do it. David Dove, if you've been with the Palin Music Center YouTube Endeavors for a while, you might remember mm. there was a there was a little demo that yeah. we did. Not a lot of folks watched it. I'll be honest with you. We're working on that. Hey, not all of them are number one hits. That's right. Yeah. But you got to keep trying. That's right. One of my, quick side note, one of my favorite musical quotes of all time is from a guy named Unknown Henson. Do you know mm, this guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And somebody was asking him about his songs. He goes, I don't write no no, no number twos. No number one hits only. I can't even say it right. So it's like, I don't write no number twos. Number one hits only. Anyway. <laughs> but we did a demo of uh, Ernie Ball Sterling series. And honestly, that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. And probably the reason why, because the, the demo is like we're doing basses and guitars. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was great. Yeah, but we, we had a blast doing that. And David uh, is somebody that sometimes folks come to your life that right when you meet them, you're like, man, I love this guy. Uh. <laughs> and and you, you just, you instantly forge a friendship, but also it's just, you just feel... A kindred spirit and David that's yeah. how I feel about you well likewise yeah you're a phenomenal yeah. human oh, he's gosh. a fantastic musician just fantastic yeah. and um, anyway I just thought it'd be kind of cool we're gonna play a little bit and um, we have if you knew the lack of preparation that we have purposely put into this <laughs> yeah yeah I think you would appreciate whatever is about to happen here because literally I just want to turn the camera on and start talking yeah. okay Absolutely. So to that end, uh, David, you moved to Nashville when? Oh, I moved to Nashville, I guess a year and a half ago now. It was January, what, 20, after pandemic, whatever. I feel like my time's still, yeah, <laughs> still yeah. catching up. But you've been there about a year and a half. Yeah, it's been about a year and a half, yeah. Okay, and so before then, you were living in Springfield, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you were playing and you were traveling quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and. Were those gigs that you got, um, maybe just for the folks watching, like if, if there's some folks that you would say, yeah, I was playing a lot with this person, this person, this person, just so they kind of know where you Oh, yeah. I mean, what was so cool about my time here is that it was very like genre spread. So it was like during the week, um, I was blessed to work with Randy Ham, who was the head of the Missouri uh state jazz studies department and we were doing mojo which is still going big band and small group and mojo is missouri jazz orchestra orchestra yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and they've been around for like 20 years i think now Killer it's amazing group. killing and so i was fortunate enough to be asked to play in that for many years um i was playing at church of course on sundays and wednesdays a lot of the time and then um, I was playing with Liz Morianda, who was like my first like country um, act or, or artist. And then I was with Jason Pritchett for honestly the remainder of my time here in town for about five years and really cutting my teeth, learning how to be uh, an MD. And even towards the end, I was doing some tour managing stuff for him as well. And an MD, if you're going, what's an MD? It's not a doctor. Yeah. It, it's musical director. Yeah. And... Um, I would love to circle back to that because when the I feel like when drummers and bass players are running the band, um, I I don't know I just in my experience that ends up being a better deal. <laughs> and, and and look I I've run a few bands yeah, in my time. I'm sure. And, and I at the end of the day when somebody who is uh, pocket conscious and rhythm um, thinking that just ends up working out better for everybody oh, involved, man. doesn't it? I, well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you were doing all that stuff, and and then you said, you know what, I'm going to go to Nashville. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, really the biggest thing for me was I've always just wanted to do this. I've dreamed about playing and performing since I was a kid. Um, I mean, I've had pictures of my heroes on my wall and everything, and I just always wanted to play. And I love being here. And it, I think the hardest part was taking that leap as it generally is because I was so happy here. And I was playing and honestly making a living being a musician. I was teaching here at Palin Music mm -hmm. and performing during the week. And it was great. Which is, I mean, let's just say this really quick. The yeah. fact that you were living in Springfield, Missouri. Now Springfield is, 
is unique compared to some other towns because Branson is literally like 30 minutes from our back door. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of opportunities to play in Branson. And But the fact that you were earning a living, a little, yeah. you were sustaining yourself just playing music. Yeah. I think it's a huge credit to Springfield. And I know, I, I can just feel some of the hot takes out yeah, there right sure. now formulating because I, I, I realize um, that's not easy. That's yeah. not easy. And, and that's something that we are getting to because here's the thing. I had somebody tell me this one time and I would love to hear your thoughts on this, mm -hmm. but um, don't let my mind wander too much. Okay. Help me. You know, this is the only, this is the first cup of coffee here. So you're getting, <laughs> you're getting whatever comes out. Here it comes. That's right. A guy told me one time, he said, Nate, there's three things that you can have to get the gig, but you only need two. And he was mm -hmm. talking specifically about being able to get an opportunity to play with the band. Mm. Um, the uh, the first one was having a unique voice. Which do you hear that out there? I, it's yeah, someone's drilling something. Someone's drilling. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the first thing is having a unique voice, a voice that it's like whether that's on the guitar or mm. even just you know your vocals, but having some sort of musical expression that is unique unto you. Mm. The second one is being so on top of your logistics and your administration, you know, that you're trustworthy. And the third one is just being a good hang. Yeah. Now here's the interesting thing. He said, you only need two. Absolutely. So yeah. you can have a unique voice and be a good hang and be kind of flaky when it comes to your, just your general sense of responsibility and accountability. And you'll still get the game. You can be a good hang and be on top of your administration and not really be particularly special musically and what you do and and this is the one that nobody likes to hear but i've seen it played out in my own life is you can kind of be hard to get along with and not fun to be around at all but because you're such a player right mm. and you're on you know it went if the you know bus call is at you know 9 a.m you know you're you're standing there ready with your stuff at 9 40 or 8 45 you know what i mean not yeah. 9 45. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah but you're 15 minutes early to everything and you're ready to yeah. go and you know, I found that to be true. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear you unpack that just for a second, just in your own life. And in the same breath, David has been touring with Tenail Towns, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you guys just went up to Canada as well yeah. as Pacific Northwest. And you opened up for this up and coming artist, Chris Stapleton. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going to make it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been playing some huge shows. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you, off the top of your head, do you know? A C. Uh, at that show or mm -hmm. just in general at that show at that show with chris stapleton which that was at um what was called prince edward island mm -hmm. and it's very east um in fact i think that was two hours ahead of what i was used to oh wow time. i mean that's yeah. how east it was yeah. beautiful spot it's where green gables was written by the way oh. i learned that that's good to know um yeah very beautiful but that one was, I think, at minimum twenty three thousand. Whatever it was, it sold out the festival that night. Wow! And so you, yeah, you played in front of twenty three thousand people. Yeah, and then Quebec City was, I think, close to eighty. Wow! And that 80, was, with, that was with Zach Bryan. Yeah, with Zach Bryan. Yeah, it was. Yeah, mind blowing. That's awesome. <laughs> so David's in town in Nashville for a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. And and talk about just the circumstances that led up to that opportunity. And if you can weave mm -hmm. it in there, what I was just talking about with being the good hang and, and all those things, oh, I, would, I would love just to hear it's what It's a big, big part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, I guess what I'd like to kind of say first, um, before we get into the human side of things, I think a lot of it did come down to grace in my life, whether it was just, so much of it came from how I was raised to meeting people like you and learning through even School of Hard Knocks how to be ready for the hang in Nashville or whatever and um, and God allowing doors to be there. But with that being said, like um, I've heard the rule of three for a long time. If you watch Shadows of Motown, they talk about this. Um, and Standing in the Shadows oh, of, yeah, Motown the Shadows is of Motown is a, is a fantastic documentary. If you've not seen that, I cried. Dude, I I might have too. I cried on the what becomes of the brokenhearted part. Oh, because just yes. them talking about that and just all the emotion. And that's one of my dad's favorite songs of all yeah. time because that was his brother's favorite song. I, I'm not going to go down that road, but that mm. yeah, it's a beautiful documentary. So the rule of three. Yeah, and that was so I've I've heard people talk about that. Like, is the hang good? Is the money good? 
and is the music good? That's well, that's that was good. the first three that I've heard. Yeah. I like that you had a, a three too. That that kind of was new to me. Mm-hmm. So rewatch that part. Um, and well, your rule of three that you're talking about that you that I think is true too. Mm-hmm. That's almost like, do I take this gig? Yeah, and that's another yeah, yeah, aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. It's like, do I? Is, is this a thing? And I had people put it to me like, okay, like, do you just need to like? When I got to town, I mean. I wanted to do everything I could just to play and, and hopefully not have to go back so into did you food say, industry. <laughs> yeah. I'm did serious. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you say yes to everything? Uh, just about. I mean, because I, w- I didn't know really anybody, like, at all. Like, I had met people when I had visited and whatever, but not enough that it's like, hey, we're, like, hanging out and going to lunch and you're putting me on your gig, you know, kind yeah. of thing. And, um... Yeah, so I guess, let me just start from the beginning. I moved there hoping that I could just do it and uh, prove myself, and I knew I was gonna grow in every facet of life as a person, as a musician, uh, all those things that I wanted to to grow in. And um, I just was myself, but I went out every single night. I mean, I was out at every gym I could go to for probably six months straight. And you brought your bass and you were ready to play. Everywhere. As, yeah. as uncomfortable as I felt, I just felt like I needed to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I played the best every night. I knew there were some times where I was like, man, I, why did I play that? That's kind of interesting. But just doing it and being there was like, and that's where I'm getting with the three, that was the biggest part. And one thing I've heard from a lot of the vets who are in Nashville talk about one of the biggest things is people legitimately want to care and they want to know you. And for them, I know you mentioned, like you've seen it before, maybe you're not the easiest guy to get along with. I've actually seen that be the number one thing to not get you a gig. Oh yeah. Um, just because they want to be, like there's a there's a connection and you might know this too with when you're playing with people and you're all on the same page, it's like a great space sports team or a well-oiled machine there's something that happens that it doesn't I mean I don't need Steve Vai to be playing guitar with me to have a great time you know it's yeah. like that's awesome that what he does but like I need you here I need you to serve this music and and you know you'll you've probably listened to podcasts you hear people talk about you're on stage for maybe two hours if not 30 minutes sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, especially uh, as an opening act or something. Um, and so you really want to like these people if you're trying to do the touring thing and you want to be on the road and do the deal. But I don't know. I just, um, for me, it was, I just, I'm a big fan of people in general and I love music. And you said something, I hope you guys caught that. David said a moment ago when he was going to mm-hmm. these jams. He's bringing his bass. I'm, I'm pitching there with, with your gig bag over your yeah. shoulder, staying there, probably feeling a little bit like an idiot at sometimes because you're like, I'm the guy, I'm I'm Ralph Macchio in, in, in Crossroads, where it's like, you bring your guitar, you come to Juke. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yes. you're, you're feeling like, eee. But he showed up. Yeah. And then this is the point. When you said it, man, it, it resonated with me. Mm. When you didn't play what you felt like was your best, Instead of saying, well, that sucked. Yeah. You said, well, that was different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and look, man, you're out there watching this right now. And I have to tell you, the supreme amount of conversation I'm having to exercise to ignore whoever is drilling <laughs> whatever is happening out there right now. If you hear that, I'm sorry. This is the, uh, the drill bed episode. Anyway, but um, look, you have to learn to love the sound that you make. Mm. And with that, you have to learn to forgive yourself. Mm. Because the issue is, so many people, it comes a nugget of wisdom, I love you. So many people are walking around with unforgiveness towards others simply because they refuse to forgive themselves mm. in wow. so many different facets. Yeah. You know, and we, get, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we don't like what we see. We have unmet expectations. And forgive yourself of that. And show up. Yeah. And be ready to play. And if it doesn't come out quite how you hoped, whether we're talking about a Sunday morning and we're talking about the big gig or whatever, just say, well, that was different. Yeah. Different meaning different from the expectation that you have. But here's what's funny is sometimes 
you let a little time get in there. Mm -hmm. You let a little time pass and you go back and you listen to that recording if it is recorded. And sometimes that ends up being some of the heaviest stuff you ever played in terms yeah. of like, you know, like, man, because you were really on that. You were like, yeah. like a, like a, a hunter in the wilderness with like your, you know, yeah. your, your, your senses were heightened and you were playing and you know, okay, so you were in A flat and the rest of the band was in G, but man, you were playing some outside stuff. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You know hey, what I mean? Yeah. It's happened. Okay. So you're in Nashville and yeah. you're there and you're showing up to these things. And, yeah. and you're, you're realizing that people want you to care and you're realizing the importance of being a good hang and you're already a good hang. So now how do we get to where you're at oh, now? Um, I, I don't necessarily like this word at first, but a lot of people would call it networking, but really I was just trying to find my people. One of the best pieces of advice that I was given, um, was like, you're going to meet some great people along the way. And you could even become really good friends with them, but they may not be the first call that you get for a gig. And the, this is why, and, he, and the guy was telling me, he's like, don't take this offensive. It's like, uh, it's like going to high school and you have your different classes of graduation yeah. or whatever. He's like, they moved at a time, they developed their people group and they're rising together. And he said, all you have to do here is hang on. You're gonna find your group that you gel with, that like musically, personally, whatever else, and just hold on and you're gonna rise together. And I, I people. kid you not, that is yeah. exactly what has I've seen develop. I, one of the coolest things that has happened to me um, was one of the first Sundays I moved to town, there's a Sunday night jam at Inglewood Lounge. And I, again, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm like, okay, here we go, like this is like, heavy hitter improv R&B night. Like that's not tunes. It's all people throwing stuff out and making it up. Like, so you're walking on stage and literally you have no information. They even give you a key? No. You, you have just no go. information. You just go and then like players are swapping out. It's really cool. Okay, so pause as I shake the camera. You couldn't do that had you not had hours and hours of practice. For sure. And you can't have hours and hours of practice if you don't love the sound that you make at the time you're in now. One of the biggest yeah. deterrents of practice is that we get so focused on where we want to be and don't embrace where we are. Mm. And the, the, um, the chasm, the space that's in between where we are and where we want to be is so daunting that we just don't even start building a bridge. Wow. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is, is that you never get there because you just don't even want to put one plank down, right? Or, or yeah. how about this? Think of it instead of a chasm, think of it as a river and you just got to start throwing stones in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so he's been practicing a lot because you love this and yeah. you were ready for that. Yeah. Even though you probably didn't feel ready, did you? Oh, I did not feel ready. Yeah. Yeah. And I was scared. I mean, literally I was nervous cause I didn't know anybody and you mm -hmm. walk into this packed small place and everyone's kind of looking at you like, mm, who's this guy? He's got a bass. He's going to play tonight. I've never seen it before. You Walking know? in there looking like and Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> hey, I, w I wish. Oh man, but I, I mean, it was it was wild. Um, but here here's where I was going with this. So I, I, you know, the band, the usually these jams, the the house band starts and they do their thing. For and but an they've hour. got are they playing tunes? Or no, they do, okay. they're doing the same. So the whole thing, thing is literally improv in the moment. In the moment. Wow, it's that's really awesome. Cool. It's God bless cool. y'all for doing that. Yeah, honestly, yeah. they're some of the hippest musicians, and um, there's a couple of those styles of jams that happen in Nashville, and it's it's wild. So if somebody right now is going, I'm I'm gonna be in Nashville next week. Where do they go to discover this? Inglewood Lounge Sunday nights. Um, I think the downbeat is usually around like nine or so, and mm -hmm. they go late. And then Wednesdays at the Flamingo, um, and I think they also start at nine, and they go late. Um, and then there's uh, this isn't as improv, but one of the places that I really cut my teeth in town was Monday nights at Bourbon Street Blues and Printer's Alley, mm -hmm. and that is a um, you sign up on a list. 
and on what you play and it is blues rock jams and that is where they're calling tunes but they just call the guy calls bands and goes okay you play bass you play drums okay get on stage and then you literally at that moment are looking at these new people you just met and go shaking hands and here we go and, and what tune are we playing who's yeah. singing what tune do you want to know and yeah. then you go for it that's cool and it's really cool so I, it was great because i was like a lot of prep that got me into uh to be able to feel at least somewhat comfortable you know, to do it. But I would say that even just doing it and being there is a big part. And I can't tell you how many people will just see your spirit and be like, be your cheerleader. Like, even if you don't think you played well or something, I can't tell you how many people that I met that are just like, dude, I love your style of playing or something, or like, want to talk to you about your gear as we all do and whatnot, and you'll develop that crowd. But going back to the Inglewood Lounge thing, I walk in, I don't know anybody, and I see this, uh, empty chair and I see a guy in the next chair uh, or the chair next to it and I go excuse me is uh, anyone sitting next to you he goes oh no and I'm like can I sit here he goes sure go ahead and we sit there and we're like kind of quiet and I notice he's got uh, these drumsticks in this really cool case mm -hmm. and I was like drumsticks he goes yep and I'm like cool so you're playing tonight he goes yes sir and I was like have you played here before he goes nope I'm like did you just move and he's like yep I'm like no way. Like I, so did I. And he's a drummer. I'm a bass player. And <laughs> let's be I, best like, friends. Like, and, well, and to be honest, and yeah. to fast forward, he became my first best friend. His name's Jay Smith, and he's from, and he's from Utah. And That's we awesome. played a lot last year together. And what this is just so crazy. What got me going is that he knew a singer who um, on the Broadway strip, which is different from New York, if you've been to Nashville, Broadway is a bunch of honky tonks and bars and restaurants and places, and touristy places yeah, yeah. and bands, live bands are playing from 10 a.m. till 2.30 a.m. Nonstop. Nonstop, weekly or daily. I mean, it's- If you've never seen that, it it it's a little hard to fathom. It is. Especially like, the, the sea of humanity that is coming is <laughs> pushing through Moving there. down blocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so he knew a singer who, uh, to the Tootsie Circuit, who is like the Tootsie's Orchard Lounge, which is famous for the back area where like Johnny Cash and them used to hang because you couldn't drink at the, at the uh, Opry. Well, now it's the Ryman, but mm -hmm. um, was that. And so they would hang out in the back lounge, but well, it's my time and cross li that little alley mm -hmm. into the thing. And so anyways, that's a whole bunch of history there. But um, he knew a guy needed a band and I got asked. And it was from that interaction of just going out. Literally walking into a thing, now key point, walking into something that he was prepared for, but still afraid. Absolutely. I, and I still, there's still moments walking in there that there are players in town who are heavies. I, you know, you name them, uh, that are either studio guys or whatever. And I'm like, I don't deserve to be here. I, I say that and, I, and then I go, you know what? I, I flip that energy around and I'm like, wait a second, I'm their fan. And you know what? If I get a chance to play tonight, awesome. And um, kind of fast forward a bit, that's actually how I got the Tennille Towns gig. There's an amazing gentleman, and I hope he hears this because I, I just owe so much to him. But his name's Jacob Lowry, and he's a phenomenal studio bass player. Also plays bass behind Reba right now, Reba McIntyre. But he's done Michael W. Smith. Wow. And, oh, man, it is list goes on and on just look him up but he has an amazing podcast called the sideman chronicles that oh, that's is cool. just if you are itching for this type of lifestyle of being a, a sideman meaning that you might want to do touring or studio stuff check it out it's the sideman chronicles and it's on spotify on on apple music apple podcast apple, whatever yeah yeah and it's and it's uh, Lowry, uh, Jason, J Jacob Lowry, Jacob Lowry. Yeah, he mm -hmm. is just phenomenal. Um, but I, I, you know, heard about him. Someone's like, you need to reach out to Jacob. And of course, studio guy's very busy, and he's a family man, you know. So mm -hmm. I reached out to him, and he's so kind, and was just like, hey man, we need to get together sometime. And here was another opportunity that I thought would be wise, and it was. He put on a deal called the Nashville Bass Summit. And I was like, okay, he's been so busy. We haven't had a chance to get coffee, but he's putting on this base summit. And of course, you know, it was like a paid thing to be a part of. And I was like, okay, can I budget this? And I was like, 
all right, you're not going to do X, Y, and Z, meaning like I didn't, I made sure that I wasn't eating out or whatever, like whatever to afford to do that thing. But I can tell you that was so worth it because I got to sit in a room with a bunch of other bass players and me, and then I got to hang with Jacob. And Jacob was so kind that he was like, uh, several months later, he was like, do you wanna to come to the studio session that I'm doing and just watch? And I was like, absolutely, like, let's do this thing. And I watched him and then we were on lunch and he's like, who are you working with right now? And that was this year, going mm -hmm. into this year. And I was like, well, my other gig that I was touring with last year is kind of slow this time. And again, if you're familiar with this being a full-time musician or any, um, well, I just say self-employed, your business can kind of do this sure. quite a bit. Um, and you don't know where it's gonna come from. And Jacob was like, well, if you want a gig, I got somebody that you need to talk to that just called me that they might need a bass player. And that was Tennille Towns. And Next thing you know, you're sitting in front of 80,000 people. Yeah, it's it's wild. but And so I owe Jacob immensely, but he's such a kind gentleman. He'd be like, oh, well, whatever. You got the rule of three down. <laughs> you know, I know you just be, he would just be like, okay. But uh, again, so much comes from that. And then even other relationships from a, a gentleman I met at church who I just played with. He's a drummer and his name's Pete Wilson and another phenomenal studio drummer um, and live guy. And he was a guy that took a chance on me to help um, build Luke Grimes' band recently um, from Yellowstone. A lot of people know him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, let's do this thing. Like, let's, let me teach you how we can do this and build a show, build a set list. and. Um, but all of that came back to the time that I first moved into town and I was playing at a church and we just hung out and we locked in together and that was it, you know, and, uh, he gave me work when I first moved into town, first CMA fest. He's like, you playing with anybody? Okay. Come with me. And, um, uh, so I owe a lot of people things and I'm very grateful and it, the list goes on. I mean, even, even to you, like I, I so much looking up to you and the way that you were a leader and a musician here at the store and everything that it's just, it's huge and no small part of that um, has affected me. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, I, yeah. Well, let, it, it's just amazing. I love you. You're, you're I love you're you too, sweet, man. man. And I gotta tell you, um, here's a couple things I hope you extrapolate from all the good stuff mm. that David said. Number one, um, he has a humble spirit and he loves people. And regardless of the amount of attention that he has spent to honing his craft, which is important, the ability to execute music on the instrument, take all the chops, take all the technique, all you're going to do is amplify your personality yeah. through your instrument. So what I'm saying is, is that if you're Boy, it's a hot take. I'm just going to say it. Let's if, go. If, if you're self-centered and selfish and insecure, you know, and by the way, arrogance and anxiety are bedfellows, mm. um, and you're a great player, then what's going to happen is you're going to, that's going to come out, you know, with great technical aptitude, but it's still, and, and if you've ever been to a show where you can just kind of sense kind of like something's not right, mm. but the playing is on point, but for whatever reason, it's not putting spirit in the room. Doesn't touch you. Doesn't touch way. you. Yeah. It might touch you here. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's not touching you here. Yeah. And some guys go, like, "Well, look, man. Sorry. For me, music is a very cerebral thing. I get that. Yeah. However, yeah. Um, those songs are not going to be played at somebody's funeral. Right. Those songs are not going to be played at somebody's wedding. Those songs aren't going to be the kind of thing that somebody says, this marks me in the soundtrack of my life. Yeah. Those songs are the things that are discussed when we're standing around exercising our intellectual ambitions. Yeah. And, and, and I know, I, I realize that, um, I don't want that to be offensive, all right? But I'm talking about, Chords and Coffee is about encouragement and about connecting with one another. And I want the music of my life to be something that brings people together. And also, I want, it to, I want there to be a sense of, you know, um, the dreams of God's heart yeah. echoed through my music, you know? Absolutely. And so this guy is humble, 
<laughs> and, and but you're also the reason you've had these opportunities is that um, you, who you are is who you attract, and you've attracted people who are further down the road. John Maxwell, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, wrote a book. It's that's the name of the book. But one of the, one of his laws of leadership is who you are is who you attract. It's the law of magnetism. Mm -hmm. And if you have a humble heart, and to your point, if you're looking for people who have your core values. And, and who want to care the way that you care and who want to be supportive as well as, David's not afraid of, de of delayed gratification mm -hmm. because you were willing to show up to the church gig or to the spontaneous gig where there's not even really a song being played and give it everything you got. Yeah. And every single time we've ever played together, you and I, or I've seen you play, you're fully vested. You know, sometimes we play gigs and we're kind of like, oh, this is sucking. And you already decide it's going to suck. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and you yeah. just sort of power through. Even in those moments, if you yeah. can just be like, I am going to live in this and then bring everything I have to this. And I don't mean like, look at me, look at me. I just mean, look at us. Exactly. Make it about we. Yeah. Take away the me. Right? Yeah. And enter into the moment. So I love hearing all that. Uh, oh, thanks. I think um, we should play. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Let's do, uh, do a little of that. Uh, you like that blues in A-flat, don't you? <laughs> that's a good key. You can pick any key. Honestly. Now, that's a good key for me because I'm not as comfortable in that key, and I assure you I'll play something different. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, let's see. See? That was different. Mm. Hey. this but when we went to the I like stepped up that E and you played something over it was so it was so good I don't know if you know so it was great no I I, um, <laughs> I was in the moment with it and you Me know too. what here's the deal is that um the best part of this what you've just watched I hope that you feel is that David gave you the rule of three mm. the, and and I gave you a different rule of three I love so it. let's let's combine these real quick rule together six. <laughs> yeah the rule of six, six. yeah yeah so what's interesting is that there is, do I take the gig first, which is David's rule of mm. three, which is, is the money good? Yeah. Is the music good? Is, and, is the hang good? Yeah. And, and if I may just expand on that a little bit, what that meant for me, because like when you, when you, especially if you relocate and I was really encouraged by um, a bass player named Nick Campbell who lives in LA. He's mm. played with Pomplamoose, Scary Pockets. He's a monster. One of my favorite and 
personally, a hot take of mine. Uh, for me, he is the best electric bass player right now. Like wow. I just think he's a phenomenal. Awesome. Just his again, his spirit. I'm really drawn mm-hmm. to people's spirit. And like when they, I heard Corey Wong say this. Like if you look like you're having fun, I'm probably gonna dig what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? Not even talking about music. If mm-hmm. you look like you're having fun, and honestly, that's the point. Whether you're just playing or whatever, right. like. This is what I live for right now is what like Nate and I just shared. Mm-hmm. Hanging out, coffee, and music. And mm-hmm. if for whatever reason everything went away, but I could still share this, I would still be playing. You'd find me anywhere doing this right now. Yeah. But um, expanding on that rule of three for me when I like moved to town, I mean, it was just like I just said yes to a lot of things. And then as you start building your career and yourself – um, or and it, even if it's not music, just like as you start progressing in life and it, you have a family or something like that, like it's okay to have those, ask those three questions and, and you should so that you don't ever um, get tired of playing. That's a big yeah. part of it. And that's kind of what I was trying to drive home there. But the rule of three for me, like is the hang good. Maybe, maybe it's like, have you played with these people before or is it going to be an opportunity to mm-hmm. play with really great musicians that you've been stoked about. Yeah. And like for me, that's actually been rule number one. Um, and I think that has served me well because, again, I'm a fan of people, I'm a fan of players, and it has gotten me to play with some wild people. I got to play with Pitar, dude, who's Corey's drummer, and like he's one of the nicest gentlemen I've ever met. Best pocket I've ever played behind. I mean, and it, it, I just couldn't believe it, you know? And it wasn't that the gig that we played together the money was, you know, the first thing for either of us. It was just to play in mm-hmm. town and do a local gig, whatever. But the hang was amazing, and I worked really hard to to hope to keep up with Pitar for sure. Um, and then I would also throw, like, is the music good on that? Like, is the, is, is the music going to be challenging? Is it worth, worth it? Um, so for me, that's the top of the three, if you will. Yeah, and so that is do I take the gig, those three. And yeah. then if you get the gig, it's going to be because you have at least two of these things, which is the good hang, you're on top of your logistics, and you have a unique voice on the mm. instrument. Now, one more to keep the gig. Oh, <laughs> that, this is this one is I learned this when I was a worship leader mm. for a person to keep the gig. You have to have all three of these. The right attitude, mm. the vision and the skill. Mm. You got to have all three. If a person has a great attitude and they understand where the band is going, but they don't have the skill, it breaks your heart. But you, but they they. What happens is if you don't stay sharp and stay on top of it, and you have to, you owe it to them. Look, personal growth is one of our core values. Oh, that's great. And the revelation of personal growth is this, is that your personal growth is not just about your own promotion and your own pathway to success. Your personal growth is about your ability to raise the average of those around you and to show up and to be there for the people that are counting on you. Mm. I'm going to talk to some dads. Mm. That's one of the hardest things about being a dad is you realize that if I don't become a better dad, it's not just so that I win some sort of dad Home Depot award, right? It's because my kids and my wife are counting on me, Mm. right? Personal growth. So you got to sharpen your skill. Your attitude starts with gratitude. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. Be grateful for little things. You got breath in your body this morning? Well, hallelujah. Yeah. Vision. You've got to keep dreaming. The tragedy of adulthood is that we forget how to dream. Mm. The tragedy of adulthood is when our imagination becomes foolish because we are more bent on focusing on what's real and tangible right in front of us. Well, the problem with that is, is that that actually steers you away from delayed gratification. (laughs) Delayed gratification is absolutely contingent on having the imagination of what could be and being willing to wait for it. Wow. Don't lose your vision, have a great attitude, and keep sharpening your skill. That's what we're doing. Matter of fact, I don't know if you know this or not, but this right here, what you're looking at, it's not just my phone. On the other side of this is the most encouraging guitar community on the internet it's the chords and coffee people oh, i love it i love it I, and i've watched several of them and i mean it's great i mean i love the people that you interview of course and a lot of them i've been fortunate to know and they're just amazing people and i love what you're doing here and of course I'm, 
It goes without saying, but I love you too, man. You've been a big help to me and my family and uh, just always encouraging me to go. And I think it's important uh, for me too. I'm just a fan of people, but again, for me, having people that have walked steps that I haven't walked yet and asking you for advice. And I've loved sharing that with you. And um, for me, who's not a, a dad yet or married, musically like i remember hearing victor wooten say that when somebody like might put you up on something it's not your job to just like oh no no not me because no it's like you mentioned this in a, in a different way he said you're meant to pull people up with you and i just yeah. thought that was so cool of somebody who i've seen in town several times now and just humbly just in his spirit his light be like Oh yeah, let's let's jam. Let's do the thing. Or, or or thank you so much. You can do it too. In fact, do it better. And mm -hmm. I just I'm like, wow, that's such a a great thing. And um, a worship pastor told me this once too. He said, if, if God has given you the ability to understand things as far as maybe gear or tone or whatever, um, apply that to any skill that you do in life that you feel called to. He says it's your job to edify it. And he said to me, that's worship. And I was like, wow, that, that kind of blew my mind that he was like, you, if you've been given the ability to understand something deeply, then you need to go do it. If you've been given the love for something, go do it, edify it. And I said, that's worship. So I thought that was a beautiful thing. And that's, um, uh, and Jacob in his podcast has talked about this. Um, he said, that's how I was able to, to do the sideman thing where he moved from a worship leader position also. And but he felt called to do it. And he said, God's given me the ability to edify this. And he is a light in the space um, that he's in. And I'm like, that's where I want to be. Yeah. So. How you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. Hey, thank you guys so much. If you would go find Snell Towns on Instagram and, Mention how amazing your bass player is. Ah. <laughs> David, is That'd there any awesome. place that they should go follow you on the internet or just stay tuned for more David Dove updates? Yeah, I would say my my main um, outlet, social media outlet right now is my Instagram. I post on there. I And that's the David Dove. Yeah, the David underscore Dove. Yeah. Um, and that's a little ego trip right there. I'm the David Dove. <laughs> you know what? If you're on Instagram, go follow him on Instagram. David, thanks for being on the show oh, today. Man, thanks for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for watching. Please just share your love to David in the comments below. Oh. He's a good guy. And uh, we'll see y'all next man. week for another Quartz and Coffee. <laughs> we'll see you.